All right, so this was the conversion problem that we wrote before, but we didn't solve. So um, we'll try and solve it now. So now when we have studied Canizaro reaction, so this is the thing that you can do now. So M is given from M, you identify K and then you identify L and then J and then I and then H. The first job is to identify each one of them. And once uh, we have identified each one of them, then if anything that is asked, we can easily answer. So you, what you do is you first identify each one of them. Make a list of H, I, J, K, L, M is given. So H, I, J, K, L, make a list of them. And then I'll be asking a few questions and you can easily answer them. So first make a list of each compound based upon your wisdom, based upon the merit of our discussion. Do that please and then listen to me. Okay, so I hope you have done it. So let's start the discussion. M is given, from M quickly you have to identify K, you have to know the reaction KOH is given, nothing is given whether it's conch or it's dilute. So from the product, only one product you are getting, if this is a Canizaro reaction, then you will get both oxidized product and reduced product. So you will, because in Canizaro you have disproportionation. So you have to be a, you have to have an acid, you have to have an alcohol. This kind of product, when you have alpha, beta, unsaturated carbonyl compound, this kind of product you get in aldol condensation. So uh, this must be an aldol condensation and this KOH must be a dilute KOH. No problem. Now we have learned earlier how to get the compounds back from uh, the aldol condensation product. So for that what you will do is you will break it from here because the carbon which is adjacent to C double bond O that is the carbon which attacks another carbonyl group. So this is a carbon that must have come to attack another molecule. So this part se separate this part from here. So if you will separate this part from here on the right hand side from the right hand side you are going to get this compound. Find this is acetophenone. And from the left hand side again the C double bond C must have been C double bond O. If uh, you have practiced the mechanism then there will be no problem in identifying that this is acetophenone. So K on which you are operating to get M is acetophenone. Fine. Alright. So K is acetophenone. This is clear? Now J. J uh, is something on, and that's something you're adding KOH and you're getting an alcohol. This is benzyl alcohol and you're getting L which you don't know. So first of all you must try to identify the reaction. Which reaction is this? And if you would identify the reaction then you would know the products. Now KOH you have used and you have an alcohol and another product. I mean you have to after studying the entire course, you have to run your mind right through all the reactions that you have studied. And you would be able to run through all the reactions only when you have practiced them sufficiently. Now this, my gut feeling says that this is a Canizaro reaction. Because in Canizaro reaction, you use KOH. You use concentrated KOH. They didn't mention this. But this has to be concentrated KOH. Otherwise, the reaction will not proceed. And in Canizaro reaction, you take, you get an alcohol and you get a carboxylic acid. Now this L must be a carboxylic acid and, and this is a benzyl alcohol. Now in Canizaro reaction is a disproportionation reaction. In disproportionation reaction what happens, a same compound is oxidized and the same compound is reduced. Now this PHCS2 group, this is called benzyl group. Benzyl alcohol means you have a OH group to this attached to the CS2. This is benzyl alcohol. Now something has been reduced to get benzyl alcohol. So that something must be benzaldehyde. Now benzaldehyde will also be oxidized because Canizaro reaction is a disproportionation reaction. This J is oxidized to get L and this J is reduced to get this alcohol. This we have discussed in Canizaro reaction. So this is benzyl alcohol this must be J because on reduction of this compound you will get this benzyl alcohol. 
So L is the compound which you get after oxidation of J. So L must be oxidative product of this J, which will be benzoic acid. No problem. So L is benzoic acid, J is uh, uh, benzaldehyde and M is given and you have identified K as acetophenone. Fine. Now you have to get I. I is simple. We have solved numerous problems on ozonolysis. You are getting J and you are getting K and you are getting these two by ozonolysis on I. To get I what you have to do is you have to merge these two C double bond O into each other and vanish away this oxygen and form C double bond C. So if you merge these two C double bond O to get C double bond C what you will get is this. This is what I must be because if you carry out ozonolysis on this from left hand side you are going to get benzaldehyde and from right hand side you are going to get acetophenone. So you are going to get, you are going to get J which is benzaldehyde we have identified and you are going to get K which is acetophenone as we have identified. So this is what should be I. Fine. Now you're getting I by H plus delta. Which reaction is this? That's the first thing you have to ask yourself and the first thing that you have to answer to yourself. H is a tertiary alcohol. That's not much of importance because if you know I, uh, no, that is of importance because there can be two possible alcohols which will give the same dehydration product as I. So that is of importance. So I is this you know and H plus delta is a reagent for dehydration that you must know. H plus is a reagent, H plus S2 is a reagent for hydration. When you provide heat then alcohols are dehydrated into alkene. This you must be knowing we had enough practice on this. So I is this given alkene. So H must be alcohol. H is alcohol which is given because H plus delta is a reagent of dehydration. So now there are two possibility for I. Now if this information was not given, then there could have been two possibilities. Shall I rub this off this M? You have to get the alcohol which on dehydration gives this alkene. Now you can have a OH group on this carbon. Right now, this alcohol, when it will dehydrate, it will give a alkene at this position. So you will get I. But they have told it is a tertiary alcohol, and this is a secondary alcohol because the OH group is on secondary carbon. So to eliminate this option out, it has been given that it's a tertiary alcohol. So when you eliminate this out, OH must be here and hydrogen must be here. So this is the alcohol that we are looking at. So this is what H is. Okay, clear, clear, clear. Fine, so we have identified all of them. Now let's see what did they ask actually in the comprehension problem. So let me rub a part of the board.